Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. What are you doing today? I am in downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma in the middle of a Black Lives Matter protest. I'm here because this is the anniversary of an important event in history, the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. It was the uh, deadliest and most devastating racially motivated, I hesitate to call it a riot, but um, it was, it was a massacre. Uh, for the longest time, it was called the Tulsa Race Riot, but riot doesn't quite uh, convey what really happened here. It was a massacre. The massacre started when a 19-year-old African-American kid was accused of attacking a white woman in a, an elevator in a downtown building. White citizens organized a lynch mob to lynch the kid, and the black citizens armed, gathered around the courthouse to uh, protect this young man from the white mob. And that's where it started. Uh, from there, it carried over to the Greenwood District. The Greenwood District it was referred to as the Black Wall Street. It was very prosperous. It was the most prosperous African-American community in the country until those two days in 1921, when the white mob, the white citizens of Tulsa, descended upon it and destroyed it, razed it, burned down something like a thousand structures, destroyed businesses, destroyed homes. They even attacked it from the air. There were private aircraft that flew overhead and bombed the neighborhoods. It's unknown exactly how many people died in the massacre. Um, there were some white citizens in Tulsa that lost their lives, but it was predominantly uh, African Americans. There is an official count, but uh, there are some people who simply were never accounted for. Uh, for a time after the massacre, uh, African American citizens of Tulsa were uh, placed in temporary concentration camps and um, the records were kind of covered up. The estimates are up to 300 people died in the massacre but we don't know where they're all buried. There is the assumption that there is a mass grave somewhere in this town but nobody knows where it is. This is gonna get a little noisy, but I'm going to attempt to go to the Greenwood District and show you some of the places where this happened. This is the uh, new baseball diamond. I say new, it's been here for several years. The old one was out at the fairgrounds. Uh, this uh, stadium was built really right on the corner of what used to be the neighborhood called Black Wall Street. Um, and it has revitalized this area a bit, but there is some ir irony in the fact that they built a ball field right here because some of the black citizens after the massacre uh, were interned in uh, the baseball field that uh, Tulsa had at the time. One thing the city did uh, a few years back is erect these plaques 
at the locations of uh, some of the businesses that were burned down along Greenwood. Uh, each one of these plaques represents a, a building destroyed and hopes and dreams lost. By the way, in case you're wondering, uh, except for when I'm talking on camera, I wear, am wearing my mask. I'm just going to walk along Greenwood Avenue for a second just to give you an idea of how many markers they are. Each one of those markers was a, a business destroyed uh, in the massacre. And it wasn't just buildings burned down, it was lives lost. I am at the corner of Archer and Greenwood. I'm going to try to walk along Archer for a minute. I can't go all the way on Archer because there's some construction and the sidewalk is closed in some areas, but there are more plaques uh, on Archer of uh, destroyed businesses in the Black Wall Street. Right, here's some of the plaques along Archer. Alright, I'm making my way back to my car. I parked pretty far away uh, because I wasn't sure how close I would get. Uh, I'm not sh I wasn't sure if the streets would be blocked off. Um, but uh, yeah, just a couple more blocks. I'll be back in my car and I'll share some more thoughts once I get there. It's a hot and humid day today. Um, there are still a few protesters out there, but uh, it's kind of cleared up a bit now. The Tulsa Race Massacre. It's not something that uh, I think most of the nation knows about, and it wasn't really talked about here in Tulsa for a long time. It wasn't part of our history curriculum when we learned about Oklahoma history. Um, honestly, I heard about it by word of mouth. My dad told me uh, about it and it was kind of passed down um, uh, just by oral tradition, which of course is not a great way to preserve history, but in this case it was the only way to really keep history alive. Um, the city just kind of ignored that this happened and yet the scars of it were still here the scars of it are, are still here today. Uh, even now, the north side of town is still the bad side of town. And it's still the area of town where uh, it's predominantly African American. It's still, in a lot of ways, a segregated city. Um, and that 
Our African-American communities uh, get fewer resources from the city. Uh, they get less support from businesses. Um, it's hard for them to get even a grocery store to open in the area. Um, and uh, it, it really is all a, a, a lingering scar from, from 1921. As we experience protests in the United States against the killing of uh, an unarmed black man by a white police officer again. Uh, and as some of those protests um, turn violent, I think it, it's important to keep in mind that the, uh, the most destructive racially motivated riot, if you want to call it that, was not committed by African Americans, it was committed upon them by white Americans. And uh, that, that's what happened here. They destroyed a thriving community and our, uh, our city hasn't recovered, even today. It used to be the most prosperous African American community in the entire country. Um, and that was all wiped out in a couple days. I have to believe that in the minds of white Tulsans, there had to be a little bit of jealousy that this African American community was thriving when the assumption of white superiority was still prevalent in the country. Uh, and they just couldn't have that. They just couldn't let that be. They had to tear it down. There's also a little bit of um, storytelling by uh, white families around town. You'll have uh, uh, you have people say that oh their grandfather or great great grandparents uh, hid some of the fleeing. Uh, African-American citizens as they were running away from the massac massacre, they, they hid uh, black citizens so they wouldn't be killed. Um, I, I suspect that that's a bit of uh, a reimagining of history. Um, because I don't think that happened very often. But what did happen is a large number of Tulsa's uh, Caucasian uh, community came down to this neighborhood uh, with guns, with torches, with airplanes and bombs and destroyed it. And there are a lot of white families in this town that have a dark secret in their family history, something that grandma or grandpa or great-grandpa never really talked about. I'm going to show you a lot of good things in Oklahoma and a lot of good things in Tulsa, but um, we can't ignore this. This was an important part of this city's history, and to deny it is to uh, rob the victims of any meaning to uh, their deaths and to their loss. Um, their story deserves to be told. And it's not a story where, you know, there were good people and bad people on both sides. No, there was one bad side. For better or worse, this is my city. And uh, I'm ashamed of this part of the history, but I'm not going to close my eyes to it. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow.